Hello and welcome back. Today we'll continue with from where we left last time. We'll make use of Teradata Studio to access Dillard's database and use SQL commands to work with the data. We'll use this second one. Use your web browser. We will use username with at uark.edu and then use the password that you created and once you are here just click once it is ready click and then go to teradata studio so let's maximize this and i'm going to cross this out so it is asking for connection profile. Let's choose Teradata. Go to next. For database server name, use UOFAIFX and then Walton UARC.edu. Now for the username, I'm using UMDA. So I'm using my username ID without the at uark.edu. So that's what we need to use here. And then this password is going to be the password that I have provided. So this is not the password that we used for entering into the system. So this is going to be the password for Teradata. So once you enter it, specify database to be UA for University Alliance underscore Dillards and if you want you can save the password and finish So now we can click on query development and Under database connections you will notice we already have UA Dillards if you expand these you will see a long list so basically this list includes almost everybody who is using this system so it also includes uh, various uh, data sets for example you have a rentals with its tables and other things but let's go to ua underscore dillard so if you are a databases and hit u you can see it goes to things that start with u and if you keep going down you'll see UA underscore Dillards. So this is the database we are going to use for the class. And if you expand tables, you'll see various tables related to this database. Some tables have multiple versions like this DEPT info, department info. And then you have a new and then the temp. So we'll stick to the original one for all the tables. Now under department info, if you look at the columns, Basically, there are two columns. One is the department integer. So that's the department number. And then you have department description. Now, another thing you will notice for each column, you also see PK, primary key. If you look at SKST info and columns. So this table has four columns and SKU, stock keeping unit. So that's an integer and that's the primary key and then similarly store also is integer and primary key similarly we have SKU info and this table has several columns including SKU which is PK or primary key and so on store underscore MSA so that also has several columns store info four columns TRNSACT for transaction so this is an important table and it has multiple columns so these are the tables that we are going to use now in this window we write SQL commands it says SQL editor and then you have Teradata result set viewer so whatever results we get we get in this table and then you have Teradata SQL history. So as you know, SQL has limited number of 
commands also it is not case sensitive so for example select whether you type lower case upper case doesn't matter and from same thing select and from are mandatory every time you want to do something or extract some information so select and from has to be mentioned so when we say select basically we are selecting columns from tables and then we have to tell these columns are from which table so we have to specify table name and then there are some optional commands that help us customize our query so let's look at this simple one first since we already indicated we want to use ua underscore deletes we can start by typing select store city so as a convention i will type commands in uppercase but you may choose to use lowercase or uppercase it doesn't matter we are selecting two columns store and city from we need to specify which table so name of this table is str info store info you can see str info here it has store city state zip code but we only need store and city and then we can say where state equal and within quotation let's say we want to see stores in ohio one more thing we can do before we run is we should specify maximum rows delets is a huge database if you google walton college and delets you will notice that one of the data sets here is delets departmental stores delets was founded in 1938 and it is a publicly traded us based retailer and it ranks amongst the largest us fashion apparel and home furnishings retailers so it is headquartered in little rock arkansas and they have been using centralized computer systems since 1960s so they have uh, donated uh, this huge data set so that we can work with that real world data so delerts department store database contains retail sales information gathered from store sales transactions the sale process begins when a customer brings items intended for purchase like it could be clothing jewelry etc to any store register a delerts sale associate scans individual items to be purchased with a barcode reader this populates the transaction table trn sact so all the transactions are stored there which will later be used to generate a sales receipt listing item department and cost information for the customer and when the customer provides payment for the items payment details are recorded in transaction table the receipt is printed and the transaction is complete so other tables are used to store information about stores products and departments so we have seen all that so delights has had ongoing collaboration with walton college and this collaboration has resulted in several gifted datasets updates and finally a weekly updated gift for advancing the skills of both our students and faculty so the one we are using it is from 2016 and it is named as uh, ua underscore delights it consists of five tables with more than 128 million rows of data so this is the one we are working with so this data set can be accessed with sql queries within the university of arkansas remote desktop environment so that's what we are using so because it has more than 100 million of rows of data we don't want to run a query that keeps on printing this millions and millions of rows to avoid getting into that kind of situation we should restrict maximum number of rows so this is only for the printing purposes so let's say we want to restrict this to 50 which can be changed very easily so now if we run this query and you can see results here so it has 25 rows you can also see row count in history 25 so you have store id integers and then city in which these stores exist so if you click on city it will sort it akron for example so this city has two stores similarly cincinnati has actually several stores 3 4 5 6 and so on toledo has four stores so this table basically says in ohio there are 
different stores and some of the cities have more than one store. We can also use pattern matching using percentage. So I will include state among the columns. So note that I have separated columns by comma and this is again from str info, str info where state like and within quotes we'll say m and percentage anything that starts with m it could be michigan massachusetts and so on let's run this so again it runs and it says it has 30 rows of data so there are 30 stores and these are the state names you have m o m s m t you can even sort it and in fact uh, no store in massachusetts so our first result is stored here and then in this tab and second result is stored here if you want to get rid of this you can simply cross it out if you are going to use any particular table for any purpose you can always export it there's option here to export results typically this kind of data we can export as dot csv comma separated variable file we can also browse and say where we want it to go so I'm going to send it to desktop. File name is result.csv. If you want to change this, you can always change. So I'm going to click save, finish. So if you minimize this screen, you notice that this result.csv file appears on the desktop. And then this is available to you for any further analysis. So going back to this, here we have five examples for generating queries and the purpose is to become familiar with Dillard's database, various tables and various columns and also get some practice for writing these queries. So for each one, I would suggest first you try on your own by pausing the video. Once you get the results, then you can move on and verify whether you are getting similar results or not. One thing to remember is that you may be able to get same results by using different queries. It's not that we need exactly same query to get same results. So same thing can be achieved in many different ways. Number one is list states with delayed stores. So I'll keep select and then use another function distinct. Because we want to list states, note that sometimes you get multiple rows with the same state. We don't want that. We only want one state to appear once. So that's why I'm using distinct. And we need state column. And state you can see is in str info. So str info is fine. We don't need where, but we need another function group by. Group by state. So once we run this, you can see it has 31 rows. So basically we get a list of all the states where you have at least one Dillard store. So if you sort this, so you get A to Z order. And we had seen earlier that there's no MA. So no Dillard stores in Massachusetts. Number two is list states and number of Dillard stores in each state. The column that we have just now from one, we want to add one more column which indicates how many stores each state has. It also says show results in descending order of number of stores. So you can pause and try on your own and then come back. So this time I'm going to remove distinct. We need state and we need count for state like how many times a particular state name appears. And this is again from str info where we have this data. So group by state, so that works fine. But we also need descending order for the number of stores. For that we can say order by, we can say count state DESC for descending. So now we should get two columns. And you can see Texas has highest number of stores, 79. The only thing is we want this column to have a proper name. 
So let's call it number of stores. And for that, in front of count state, give space. And within double quotes, we can say number of stores. So when you run this, now this column has name number of stores. Number three, how many different SKUs are available at Dillard stores? So note that the question is about SKUs. So we'll definitely need a table that has SKUs as column. So far we have been using STR info, store info, and you can clearly see SKU is not a column in this table. In fact, there are multiple tables where we have SKU. So let's go with SKU info. So we want count of SKU from table named as SKU info. We don't need anything else. So note that uh, because it is simply counting, the results will have just one number. Run. So we get more than 1.5 million different SKUs. Number four is list quantity, amount, ORG price and S price. So original price and selling price for quantity more than 30. So when a customer purchases more than 30 items only for those situations and show results in descending order of quantity. So basically it says we need four columns, one, two, three, four. And we'll have to find a table where these four columns are available. So TRNSACT, so transaction table, you can see should include all this information, selling price, original price, quantity, and so on. So let's first specify what columns we need. Quantity and then AMT for amount and ORG price and selling price, S price. And all these are coming from table called TRN, TRN, SACT. So note that it is not transact, it is TRN, SACT. And then it says we need only those situations where quantity is more than 30. And we also need to put quantity in descending order. So order by, and for descending we say DESC, run. So there were six transactions where people purchased more than 30 items and it looks like there was a huge discount because original price for this one was $89.50 and it was being sold for only 24 cents. Similarly, you have other huge discounts, probably some kind of clearance sales. Number five, find total number of SKUs, total amount, average selling price, average original price for SKUs sold at a discount. So you can pause the video and try to construct your query. So we need count of SKU, sum of AMT, average of S price, also average of ORG price. So those are the four columns and these are in this table all the columns. Now where we want those situations where SKUs are sold at a discount. So we can say ORG price is greater than S price. And there is no other requirement. So we'll remove this. So we run. So more than 63 million items at Dillard stores for which we have data, they have been sold at discount. And this is the total price from this database. Average original price was $42 roughly and average selling price was roughly $18.78. So some very quick basic concepts. So when we create a query, it creates a temporary table. It's a new table based on existing tables, which can include raw data columns that we have seen earlier or it may have calculated columns like sum, average, or it can have specified rows. For example, all the cities in Ohio. 
So there is a selection criteria that we incorporate in the query from time to time. And then there are output specifications. For example, we want certain things in descending order. So there are basic elements in our query. We have commands which are logical instructions like select, from, and then there are functions which are pre-programmed numeric or string conversions. So it could be average, sum, and those kind of things. We have used operators like quantity greater than 30 and so on. And there are column name references, identify columns to include. Some common commands that we have been using. So this is for us, not United States, simply for us. Because we already specified database UA underscore Dillards, we did not use this command. But if we did not do that in the beginning, we may have to use this and specify which database we are referring to. And then select from where we have seen all those. We have not seen inner join yet, but we are going to look at one example. And we have seen group by and order by. Sometimes we need query that has information from more than one table. So queries often select data from more than one table. Join the tables based on matching field. So we have the columns in those tables and they can be used. Represent potential join in ERD, Entity Relationship Diagram. Especially when you are using it for the first time, it is always a good idea. But once you understand everything, sometimes you may be able to use it without a need for ERD. In Teradata SQL, we often assign an alias or some kind of nickname to each table so that we can easily reference source of specific columns. So this is basically to reduce typing. Instead of typing same thing again and again, we can give a short nickname or alias. So here is an example of two tables. Generate a table that indicates how many different items are carried by Dillard store. Sort the list alphabetically by state and this is how the table has to look like. You should have first column as state ID, then store number, store city, and number of items. If you look at our Dillard's database, you'll find that these four columns are not in the same table. In fact, we need information from two tables, str info and skst info. So find stores listed in store info table, which is this one. So we have the store. And then store code is the link between the two tables because you have store in the first table and you also have store in the second table. So they connect to each other. Now sum the number of SKUs for each store. So you have SKUs and group results by state abbreviation. Report out desired fields. Database UA underscore Dillards. So although it is not needed here, but just for the completeness, I have included it here. If you don't write this still, it should work because we already have that reference. For the table that we wanted, we are specifying the columns using select. So we want state, store, city, and count of SKUs. Now, another thing you'll notice here is before state, we are specifying S dot, S dot, S dot, and K dot. So before each column, you'll notice that we are specifying S or K. Now where they are coming from, they are coming from here, from which table? So first table, as you know, is str info. So because there are two tables, we are giving a nickname of S to the first table, str info, and then we are doing inner join. And second table is SKS T info and the alias or nickname that we are giving is k because we have like store in both the tables so we'll have to specify which table we are referring to so when we say s dot we are saying that for the first column we are referring to first table second column we are referring to first table third first table but for the fourth column we want second table represented by k so instead of like typing out everything like str info dot state, str info dot store, str info dot city, and then skst info dot sku, 
So instead of typing all that, we are simply using this S and K. And inner join on, so we are saying store in this table and store in this table are same. And then we want to group by state, city and store and also order by a particular column. So when you run this, you will get the results very easily. So there are two types of joins, inner and outer. Inner is the one more commonly used. So extraction of table from more than one table, we can join columns. So common column on which two tables are joined. So it's a key, primary key and foreign key. Rows in new table will be concatenation or combination of rows from each original table. Inner join is more of a natural join. Joins rows from each original table that are common to both the tables. Whereas in outer join, you have rows from each original table, including rows not common to both tables. As a result, when we do outer join, you may have many cells in the table which are empty or missing data. So here are some common SQL functions. We used sum earlier, also average and count. There's another function that could be used is extract, where you could pull apart month, day or year from a date column. So basically functions create new columns which can be named using as operator. So we had seen earlier, if we want to give a new name, we can give that name using double quotes. Here are some useful operators. You could use equal, less than equal, greater than equal. Similarly, AND or operators between to test if a numerical value or date falls between two values. IN to test if a value lies in a set. Example, IN, JAN, FEB, MARCH or 2468, etc. So we saw some examples of using Teradata Studio and UA underscore Dillard's database. We generated some results using SQL. Note that whatever we have done is uh, saved under history and we can always go back to it. So for example, this was the first query that we ran and when you double click, you can always go there or if you want to go to this one, you can double click and immediately it takes you to that query. You have all the results. If you need something, you can save it or you can get rid of the output simply by crossing these out. So although we only looked at uh, Dillard's database, but you also have many others like Axiom, which is a leader in technology and marketing services. There is Nielsen database, multinational data measurement company, Sam's Club database, which is a division of Walmart stores, Tizen frozen foods. So Tizen, for example, if we need to go there, we simply type T. So you have Tizen frozen foods. If you expand, you can see various tables and columns within the tables. So these databases you may find very useful, especially when you are working on some projects. So I'm going to cross this out. So I'm not going to save this. And then log off. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you soon.